Hello everybody, this is AG here, and welcome to Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Road America as the Haas IndyCar Series is back after that wonderful Indianapolis 250 that we had about two and a half weeks ago. A well-deserved break for all these drivers and myself from all the recording we did, all the racing we did, and once again a huge congratulations to Angel Gutierrez on his Indianapolis 250 race victory. The downside for him, he's not full-time, so he's not racing here at Road America. The 26 full-time drivers here are ready to qualify, though, for Chevy Indy, Wisconsin, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on AG, the channel. And here's the driver who won this race last year, Trey Smith in the number 79, defending winner of this race at Road America. This is one of the best road course races I think we have in the Haas IndyCar Series, probably only behind Watkins Glen, which, funny enough, only this race and the duel at the Glen are the only two road courses left on the schedule for these guys. So we get a lot of the road courses out of the way in the early part of the season, but we saved the two best ones for last, I do believe, and uh, here we are at Road America. For Chevy Indy Wisconsin of course in qualifying on the road courses we have a 10 minute session for all 26 drivers top six advance on to the fast six shootout it'll be 10 minutes in the fast six shootout due to the length of this road course being so long uh, they're not really gonna all be able to get the times in in a five minute session uh, around this 4.048 mile road course it'll be 13 laps tomorrow in this event and there will be a cycle of pit stops about midway, actually a little bit past midway through. Uh, but nonetheless, always a great event every single year. Of course, I'll never forget this race three years ago. Nathan Staplin won. We had four guys right on each other after the cycle of pit stops. Garrett Sonor, Thomas Lipscomb, I believe the two drivers got into each other through the kink. What a wild race that was when Nathan Staplin went to victory lane. Hey, Nathan Staplin had a good run as an owner in the Indy 250. Especially with his driver, Jay Knapp, who sits third in the point standings. And there is a number 98 machine. Of course, he sits third in the standings. Still going for his first career win on the channel, however. We'll have to see if he can pull something off here at Road America. But our points leader is the double zero of Luna Lona. Still holding on to that points lead. Of course, none of the full-time guys grabbed the race victory in the Indianapolis 250. And the driver who finished second was Christian Vargas. And Vargas came into that race 25th in points, so not much of a shakeup up top in the point standing. Still Lona Lona and Aaron Abel, of course, they're separated by 16 points. And you got Jay Knapp now moving up to third after a solid run in that race. Solid run all weekend, all week in the Indy 250. He's 27 points behind. John Andrews, the 2018 winner of this race here at Road America, is 37 points behind. And then Logan Williams, 38 points behind. This is Logan's home race. Jack and a Hopefully have him in the booth for the Sprint Series race to or on Wednesday night, I should say. Um, of course, I'd have him in the booth for the IndyCar and Cup races, but he's racing in both of those events. So definitely going to be uh, intrigued to see what Logan Williams can do here in his home state. And know he's excited for it here at Road America. There's a lot of great racing coming up here from Road America. We've got the IndyCar race tomorrow, Sprint Series on Wednesday, then Saturday, the return of the Cup Series to Road America with the Storm Bowling 400K. Be a 16 lapper for those guys. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're excited for it here around this road course. And of course, we had a road course race last weekend in the Wall Wall Cup Series. Echo Evans Ross once again got the race victory over there. And we'll have to see what she can, in fact, pull off in the third road course race of the season because she has swept the two that we have had so far over there in the Wall Wall Cup Series. But over here, it's been all over the place. Of course, an equal rating series in the Haas Indy Car Series, so. Definitely uh, shakes the field up quite a bit, and no one really gets an advantage over the other drivers. Of course, we have had a couple of drivers win multiple races this season, with Chris Reynolds winning the first two road courses of the season, and then Cole Raymond getting the race victory at Coda, and then going on the win on the high speed oval of Kansas. Of course, the last road course race that we did have was on the Indianapolis road course, and Luna Lona grabbed the race victory in that one. So we'll have to see if she can pull something off there, but oh, oh my. Is this the same turn, turn five? It is. Now, something I remember about last year's race is that Logan Williams had so much trouble getting through turn number five. I think he spun out in the race on this course, or in this turn, I should say, twice in the race, and he just did so here in qualifying. 
that that turn even a year later still the thorn in logan williams side right there and i'll have to see if he can get back out there and get a lap back on the racetrack because if not he's going to start dead last and uh with this being a road course not at all what you want qualifying is so important on these road courses uh because it's just so hard to work your way from the back to the front considering how short the races are and uh you definitely want to be in that fast six and have an opportunity at the pole because Winning the pole could easily award you the race victory. And uh, that's the importance here, especially on the road course. And Caleb Rose with a great opportunity here in the three machine. But Trey Smith, defending winner, goes to the top of the board. That's his second lap right there. I think a lot of these second laps are going to be much faster because these guys all on each other right here. So that's not going to work out too well in the favor of Caleb Rose, I don't think. Uh, Jay Knapp just went up the third there. Chris Reynolds, how about the Outer Island cars? They're back up to speed again. Really didn't see too much of them in the uh, Indy 250, but, uh, you know, they had a good run in that race regardless. Uh, but Chris Reynolds, 8th in points. Trey Smith, 7th in points. It hasn't been a barn burner season for these guys. They have three wins as a team, but it's not Chase Harris level. But uh, Chris Reynolds still hanging on there in 3rd. And you got John Stewart in fourth, Jay Knapp, and Landon Smith Jr. So the Smith brothers right there inside the top six as Avery Alford. You know, this is a driver who absolutely is starting to come into his own. Finally got his first career win on the channel a week and a half ago in the Wall Wall Sprint Series at Gateway. Um, had a great run, though, in the Grand Prix of Indianapolis. Got a podium finish there. And, uh... Avery Alford had a solid run in the Indy 250 as well. He's still, though, 22nd in points. I think he's far from winning the championship. Uh, this was, of course, the car that won the championship. But, hey, this is a home team, the Wisconsin Speedworks organization. Andrew Williams, the owner of this team. Of course, Logan's brother there. And uh, Avery Alford and John Stewart currently both in the Fast 6 right now. And just as I say that, Justin Zidell has other ideas as Angel Oliveira has gone off in Turn 5. These guys carry so much speed, and then they go downhill into a sharp left-hander, and you see the tire marks there going into that corner. We're going to see that, I think, in tomorrow night's race quite a bit. And I don't know if we're going to see it too much in the Cup Series, though. These guys go so much faster going down into that corner. Definitely creates a lot of interesting scenarios. Noah Clifton has moved his way into the top six, and Noah Clifton's first career win on the channel came here all the way back in 2016 and uh it may be his only win in this series i can't remember <laughs> he has not had a good season unfortunately for dm motorsports he's 23rd in the standings coming into this race but uh hey a place he's won at before in the haas indycar series albeit seven years ago still a driver that can pull it off here luna lona has found her way into the top six definitely a good thing for her right there trying to get her second win of the season. Of course, uh, she's kind of having a bit of a struggle in the sprint series as of late, trying to get it into the chase over there. Um, currently tied with Bruno Diacomo for that cutoff going into Wednesday's race at Road America. But over here, it's been a very successful run for her and uh, pretty solid run in the Indy 250. Was able to hold on to the points lead. She's got 16 points on Aaron Abel and for Abel's situation, he's 20th right now here in qualifying, so not really a good spot to be in. Logan Williams is still yet to get out there and complete a lap, and he does not have too much time. We'll have to see if he can finally get one here, but uh, ended up spinning out on his fast lap there and could not get a time in. And Angel Oliveira, another driver who spun there in turn number five, also deep in the field, 25th, slowest of all the drivers who have officially completed a lap. These guys... Roughly go about 15 seconds faster a lap than the Cup guys do. So these guys carry a lot more speed around this place. But uh, it is still a very high speed road course. So many long straightaways here. And uh, especially this one going right in the can in the corner can be a treacherous one if they are not careful going into that right-hander. Chris Reynolds takes the fastest time. He was already fast six, but Luna Lona has been knocked out. It's Chris Reynolds. How about the Wisconsin Speedworks guys? Avery Alford and John Stewart both inside the Fast 6. Then you have Trey Smith, Tanner Parton, and Noah Clifton. Great runs for all of those guys as the time has finally run out. And I think Logan Williams has finally gotten the time in. 13th 
Not too shabby considering he spun it off in his first lap. Uh, that's the first half of the field there for Logan Williams. And hey, could get a bit of a crazy race. He could definitely get a good run out of that one. And he's one of those drivers who's up there in the points. Fifth in the standings, 38 behind. Wants to try to keep that thing in championship contention for American Motorsports. Still the same Fast 6. Luna Loma now 8th. Caleb Rose is just outside the Fast 6 in 7th. Then Bradley Bradshaw and Aaron Abel has found his way to 10th. That's not what Luna Lona wants as Abel right behind her in the championship standings. They'll be right behind each other to start the race if it stays in that respective order. See where Thomas Troxel is. That 42 machine. Uh, 22nd right now, and uh, oh boy, what what a very, very miserable, miserable week he had at Indianapolis. Failed to qualify for the Indy 250. Uh, he, along with Ace Garcia, the two drivers who are full-time that failed to qualify for that race that are back here today. Troxel sits 17th in the point standings, 93 points behind, so he's not out of championship contention and a couple of race victories if that's possible in any such way for him which he did just improve his time not enough to go fast six but he's now up to 14th right behind Justin Zidell so a bit of an improvement there and I know he is upset about uh, what all happened there at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway meanwhile Trey Smith has moved up to second it doesn't really mean that much but it gives him a buffer in case anyone knocks him out here the last half a minute of course, no one's going to knock him out at this point. Those those six guys, I think, are pretty much locked in. The tire wear, the tire wear is pretty much non-existent here at Road America. Interestingly enough, these guys tend to keep it the whole way through, but they will still need to change their tires on their uh, respective pit stop in the race. So that could get very interesting. But these guys are going to be flying around here each and every lap, and uh, they could be right on each other the entire race as well. That's going to do it for round one. And our Fast Six include Chris Reynolds, Trey Smith, Avery Alford, John Stewart, Tanner Pardon, and Noah Clifton. That is going to be the Fast Six shootout here from Road America. You got Caleb Rose and Luna Lona there in row four. Bradley Bradshaw and Aaron Abel in row five. Cole Raymond, Roy Ribbleton in row six. Justin Zidell, Thomas Troxel in row seven. Ace Garcia and Logan Williams in row eight. Jay Knapp and Christian Vargas in row 9. John Andrews, Nicholas Ambadio in row 10. Christian Master, Lana Smith Jr. in row 11. Zachary Fitzwater, Brad Stover in row 12. Eric Drew, Angel Olvera make up the last row here to start in Chevy MD, Wisconsin. Let's go ahead and move on to the Fast 6 shootout and see who wins the poll here from Road America. And here we go for the Fast 6 shootout from Road America. Chris Reynolds, Trey Smith, Avery Alford, John Stewart... And then Tanner Parton and Noah Clifton. Going to be going for the poll here in Chevy Indy, Wisconsin. How about the Wisconsin Speedworks team? Both of their cars here in this Fast 6 shootout. And same with the Outer Island Motorsports team. They're both in this Fast 6 shootout as well. And you got Tanner Parton for Nathan Orman Motorsports. And then Noah, or yeah, Noah Clifton for DM Motorsports there in the 94. Of course, two of the guys in this session have won this race before. Noah Clifton and Trey Smith, so watch out for them. They could be both going for their second career Road America win in the Haas IndyCar Series. Ten minutes for these guys due to the fact that this track is so long and uh, we need to give them time to run back around. And unlike in real life where they have the timing line just before the pit lane entrance, don't have that uh, option to do that here in NR2003. So uh, the start-finish line is officially where the lap starts and ends. And it's right in between pit lanes, so they got to go around three times to do one lap, basically. So, Avery Alford in the 13. And while a championship may be out of the question for him and Clifton, still going to be going for it here for the race victory. John Stewart also deep in the points as well, but Reynolds and Smith... Yeah, our island teammates with a pretty solid run this season. Tanner Parton kind of midway through there, 92 behind the standings. Actually, yeah, John Stewart's 97 behind. So other than the outer island guys, all the other guys here in this Fast 6 shooter have not had good runs this season. As a matter of fact, all the drivers who have won races this season are top 10 in points or higher, with the exception, of course, of Gutierrez, which he was only in the Indy 250, so that doesn't really count right there. But uh, all the full-time guys who have won so far this season 
sit top 10 in points coming into this race. And only seven races remain here in the Haas IndyCar Series as well. This is race number 10 of the season. So, not, they don't have much time to get up there in the point standings at this point to uh, find a shot at the championship come the end of August at the Pocono Raceway. Chris Reynolds out there, Trey Smith as well. This could get interesting because you got Noah Clifton and John Stewart right on each other, and then Tanner Parton there as well. But everyone is going to have the same amount of laps in this session. Uh, that's that's good. We'll see what uh, all these guys can do here. Avery Alpha going to be the first to start his fast lap. And then right behind him, you got Chris Reynolds there on the 75 machine. Trying to get his third win of the season. Reynolds has yet to win a pole, though, this season. Trey Smith has gotten the pole position. And of all the drivers in this session, he, along with Tanner Parton, two guys who have won poles this season here in the Haas IndyCar Series. I can't remember where Tanner Parton got his pole. I'm pretty sure... Trey Smith won the pole at Richmond, but much different track than uh, what we got here. But Avery Alford going to be the first driver to complete a lap here in the Fast 6 shootout. And of course, a bonus point towards the championship for winning the pole. And for those two Otter Island guys, that is exactly what they want. Trey Smith is 45 behind. Chris Reynolds is 50 behind. And uh, Chris Reynolds, outside of his two wins, has not really had that good of a season here. Those are, those are his only two top fives of the season. Uh, his uh, wins at Rhythm... Wins at Riverside and Willow Springs. Getting a little tongue-tied right there. I'm talking too fast. Need to slow it down. That's what these guys need to do in the turn five. We saw a couple of issues there in the first round. This this is really tight here because you have John Stewart right behind Noah Clifton. I don't know if that's going to really affect John Stewart or not, but this could get a little dicey uh, between these two drivers if they're not careful. And here's Tanner Parton going to be the first driver, or the last driver, I should say, to start his fast lap. So Avery Alford coming through here in the number 13 machine. Had a great qualifying effort. Actually, you know what? Let me rephrase that. He actually started midway through the field on the Indy Road course and then worked his way up to third in that race. Um, hey, if he gets the pole, he could easily win here at Road America. He's going to clock in 147.864. We got Chris Reynolds coming here in the 75. He's going to come up the hill, complete his first fast lap. And Chris Reynolds going to go to second. First, excuse me. I, I, I was just like, you know what, he's going to be slower than Alfred. He's almost a second faster there than Avery Alfred. 146.976 for him. Trey Smith in the 79. Now, I think we're going to see a lot of these times increase on the second lap. He's going to go second there, 147.6. Nine or six, eight, five, and then you have a split here between John Stewart, who is second quickest, and then Noah Clifton, who is fourth quickest. And here comes Tanner Parton going through the kink. He's a little ways behind everybody else right here. You got Trey Smith, Noah Clifton, and John Stewart all on each other. But Tanner Parton has a clean racetrack ahead of him. So does Chris Reynolds, and Chris Reynolds still over half a second faster than everybody else so far here in this Fast Six shootout. Now, the one thing about this racetrack, though, the pole sitter starts on the outside lane going down the hill. You're on the outside in turn one if you win the pole. You do get the jump at the start, and you can clear the inside, but starting second might actually be where you want to start for this race, even though you don't get the bonus point for winning the pole there. So that could get very interesting. As Tanner Parton going to be sixth of the six drivers so far. Here comes Avery Alford in the 13. And nonetheless, starting top six at a place like this is exactly what you want in terms of getting an opportunity at getting the race victory. So a lot of crazy things can happen here at Road America. It's not a front row lock at this racetrack like it is at some of the other road courses. Second quickest for Alford, but still nowhere near Chris Reynolds' time. I don't think Reynolds even needs to clock in another lap. I think that's going to win him the pole right there. What a blisteringly fast lap there for Chris Reynolds compared to everybody else. No improvement there on the second lap there. And it's kind of not a surprise considering how fast he went there. Comes Trey Smith, though, in the number 79. We'll see if he has anything for his teammate going up the hill. And Trey Smith across the line going to go 147.076. That is good enough for second quickest. He was close there, but not enough. And then you have Clifton and John Stewart. Neither driver improves their time. And I think the fact that they're right on each other 
may have uh, had something to do with that. It looks like Otter Island Motorsports may lock the front row here for Chevy Indy, Wisconsin. Go figure. It's going to be actually interesting to see Chris Reynolds and Trey Smith go after it because both drivers have been excellent this season. That team has been excellent this season. Of course, NS Racing currently holds on to the owner's championship lead. So, hey, I don't have the best team right now. Even though Nathan's yet to get a win this season, those NS guys have been ultra consistent. Aaron Abel going to be starting in the 10th position for tomorrow's race, so that could get very interesting right there. Tanner Parton across the line for his second lap. He goes to third, but not enough for the Outer Island guys, and I think that'll probably do it. We'll see if Alfred improves on his third lap. Because that's the benefit of having a longer course like this. You get that extra time to clock in a couple more laps than you would in another place, and I think that's definitely given uh, these guys a bit of an advantage here in terms of uh, finding speed on their second and third laps, but Alfred will not improve his time. He's still going to be fourth. Chris Reynolds doesn't need to improve his time. It's looking pretty solid there in the 75 machine. And across the line, Chris Reynolds going to stay at 146.976. Trey Smith coming up the hill right here. Don't think he's going to have enough to beat Chris Reynolds' time either. And he is going to go... Oh, he got it! He got it! He stole it right away from Chris Reynolds there. How about that? And Noah Clifton going up to third there. The 47-2-3-3. John Stewart still fifth. Actually, John Stewart improved. And now Alfred's back in the last position. We'll see here if Tanner Parton can do something on his third lap. How about Trey Smith right there? And that'll be Trey Smith's second pole of the season if he can pull it off. Tanner Parton also going for a second pole of the season here in the 24 machine. We're just going to have to see if he can do something right here. Maybe have an opportunity of getting a front row starting spot, but no one's been able to go under a minute 47 except the two Otter Island cars. And I think with that being said, I think it's going to be... Uh, Bit of a stretch for Tanner Parton to beat either of these guys. But we'll have to see across the line for Tanner Parton in the 24. And no improvement. I think it's safe to say at this point that Trey Smith has won the pole for Chevy Indy, Wisconsin. How about that? I thought Chris Reynolds was going to hold on to that in the 74 machine. Not able to do so. Comes Avery Alford. Up the hill and across the line for his fourth lap. 147.46. And then Chris Reynolds, one last chance to beat Trey Smith here. And he's going to come across the line. And uh, yeah, he had all that speed on his first lap right there. Trey Smith kind of wound that car up to find the speed near the end of the session. And Trey Smith coming across the line. I mean, he doesn't need to improve at this point. I don't see uh, Clifton or Andrews really improving their times any more than they have. We'll see, though. Clifton across the line. No improvement for him and no improvement there for John Stewart either. And that leaves Tanner Parton with one last chance on his fourth lap. the hill one last time for Tanner Parton. Fourth quick. It's still going to be a great starting position for Tanner if he can uh, hold on to that, which... Oh! He's going to move up to third right there. Going to jump the 94 of Noah Clifton. Very interesting right there. So Parton looking to start third now. That's a good place to be there to start this race. He's going to have an opportunity of getting his first career win on the channel. He's never gone to victory lane before either. Uh, just like uh, Caleb Rose has never won a race before on the channel. Of course, Tanner Parton kind of going for that chase spot over in the Wall Walk Cup Series as well. So maybe the experience here on uh, the road course in the IndyCar Series may help him out on Saturday for that race. That will do it.
Trey Smith in the 79 is going to win the pole for Chevy Indy, Wisconsin here at Road America. Going to lead us to the green flag and get a bonus point towards the championship. It's going to actually tie him with Brad Stover in the title race going into the race. He'll be 44 behind Luna Luna now. That'll do it right there. Finally done. How about that? Trey Smith, Chris Reynolds on the front row. Then it's Tanner Parton and Noah Clifton in row two. John Stewart, Avery Alford in row three. Caleb Rose, Luna Lona in row four. Bradley Bradshaw and Aaron Abel in row five. Cole Raymond and Roy Ribbleton in row six. Justin Zydell and Thomas Troxel in row seven. Ace Garcia and Logan Williams in row eight. Jay Knapp and Christian Vargas in row nine. John Andrews and Nicholas Ambedio in row ten. Christian Master and Landon Smith Jr. in row 11. Zachary Fitzwater and Brad Stover in row 12. Eric Drew, Angel Olvera round out the entire starting grid here from Road America. Congratulations to Trey Smith on winning the poll for Chevy in Wisconsin. And we'll see you guys tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern time for the 10th race of the season in the Haas IndyCar Series. I will see you guys later.